Good morning, everybody, and welcome to lecture number seven. So this week we have a little bit of an abbreviated week, um, and so uh, there's not really much to do, um, but there is something very important that I want to do. So um, I'm going to bring up the syllabus here, and you see under lecture seven, there's just lecture seven, nothing really due this week uh, besides your writing prompts. Um, so I do want to talk a little bit about uh, the CFP. So a CFP is a call for papers. Uh, so you have to be able to uh, find a call for papers in order to write some papers. Uh, so I'm showing you uh, what this is. Now, a call for papers is basically um, an organization wanting to find uh, specific kinds of academic papers. And so they put out a call to academics and say, hey, we want these kinds of papers. And you can submit those and you either get them published or you present them at a conference. So I have pulled up uh, University of Pennsylvania's uh, CFP list because it's pretty comprehensive. Uh, you see here on the left they've got all their um, recent posts organized by discipline, right? Um, and there are a lot of disciplines on here, although it is geared primarily towards English uh, because it's maintained by the Department of English. But you will find that there are interdisciplinary calls for papers and graduate conference call for papers and general announcements here. Uh, that those will have um, conferences and uh, uh, journals that are publishing or presenting for your field or a general field that will allow you to present. Uh, you'll also find here that there are international conferences. So, um, if I don't know what field I want to be in, I can do a search right up here um, for a specific topic. So, say I want to do a paper on politics, for example. Uh, let's see. Portal, the Journal of Comparative Literature, accepting submissions for the Spring 2019 edition, Literary Journal Portals. Okay, so let me look. Papers comparing at least two authors or texts, interdisciplinary research within the arts, philosophy, cinema studies, and sciences. Papers engaging with literary theory and criticism, gender studies and queer theory, animal studies, psychoanalysis, etc., should be MLI style, no longer than 25 pages. Compare at least two texts, with different linguistic traditions. Citations should include original language and an English translation. All right. So that's one possible place where I might find uh, a forum for political discussion. There's also homeschooling and libraries. Uh, Southeast Asian Diaspora, Gender, Labor, and Performance, Conference on Narrative Games, Registration Live for Neo-Victorianism and the Senses, since in the past, right? Probably by far the better way to go about this, though, is to look for a specific topic, right? So say I want to go actually to these graduate conferences that are general, right? There's the 10th Annual Scholarship of Teaching and Learning Conference Theme Metacognition. Okay, so this is a conference that will allow me to write in these four different areas. Yeah, assessment and evaluation, critical thinking skills, the art of reflection, or becoming a better thinker. Um, and so they're offering uh, no more than 300 uh, word individual proposals 
or four 20-minute presentations. Uh, they also are giving you the option to do panel discussions. So if you've got friends or colleagues you would like to go to the conference with, you can both submit something to create one panel of two to three 20-minute discussions or one 40-minute panel, right? Uh, and there's the proposal process, yeah? So if we go back to the list, so let's look at the 73rd annual RMMLA conference at El Paso, Texas. Old English, the language of the Germanic inhabitants of England, dating from the time of their settlement in the 5th century to the end of the 11th century, has three dialects, West Saxon, Kentish, and Anglian. Uh, so you can do a paper on any of these, right? It should probably be about Old English since it's the Old English Conference. Yeah? So... This is a good site to look around for calls for papers, especially if you have a topic in mind. Uh, if you don't have a topic in mind, I would encourage you to spend some time this week thinking about uh, a topic that you might be interested in studying. I do want you to consider studying a topic that is within your field of study, right? And if you're not sure what uh, calls for papers might be within your field of study. You can actually go to the library, right? The NDSU library, which you all have access to. And under quick links, you've got this research guides thing. So here they've got all the disciplines that are taught at the college, right? Say your discipline is criminal justice. You click on that, it gives you uh, a number of sources where you can find uh, journals or uh, articles in your field. So say you want to search EBSCO which is a good database for uh, finding articles of academic nature right um, and you're interested in community policing So, here's a article inside an academic journal, okay, I like this. So, I'm going to look at the full text of this article, and I note that it's in the, that it's in the journal Police Practice and Research, an international journal. So, I like this article, I'm probably going to save it, right? But then also, I'm going to look up the journal looks like it's a Taylor and Francis journal, right? And right here you see submit an article, right? That will take you to the current CFP, generally. Apparently, right now, they're having uh, maintenance, right? But generally, you can create an account and use Scholar1 manuscripts on Rutledge to submit an article to that journal. 
right? Um, and if you're unsure, you can always email the editor and ask them if they have a current CFP and how you would use that, right? Um, most journals will have a CFP that they have. If not, sometimes they will be uh, sometimes they will be solicited um, submissions only, but uh, that's a way that you can search for CFPs in your field uh, that aren't necessarily going to be either the general uh, CFPs or the uh, or the uh, English specific ones that you'll find on the UPEN uh, search. So. Um, that's sort of an introduction uh, to CFPs. Uh, like I said, they can be found all over the place. If, you, if there's a specific journal uh, that you would like to be published in, chances are if you do a search for that journal, you'll find that journal's webpage, and they will have a CFP posted on their webpage somewhere uh, so that you can submit to that. Um, you will all be finding a CFP to submit to for your IMRAD paper. Uh, so it's important that you uh, do that work this week to find a place where your CFP is because next week you'll see CFP choices due, right? So you have to choose which, which CFP you're going to use, right? CFP choice due uh, next week. So um, be sure that you pay attention to uh, what the content of those journals is uh, or the content of that conference is, uh, so that you can discuss with intelligence um, why you want to choose that specific CFP to respond to. Because um, your, your, your choice has consequences, right? Uh, certain journals specializes in, specialize in certain things. Uh, so uh, as you go along and choose your CFP, you're going to want to choose a journal that best accomplishes your personal goals as far as what you want out of your writing. Um, so this week, your uh, writing prompts. Uh, I have two for you. I want you to, one, discuss why you want to be published in a specific journal. Okay, so... Most of you know that in academia, right, the, the end goal basically is to be published, right? You want to participate uh, in an academic conversation. Uh, if you don't want to be published, right, you can talk about why you don't want to be published, right? But for those of you who that is your goal in academia is to be published uh, and you have a specific journal in mind after looking at some of these CFPs, uh, please write about that. So discuss why you want to be published in a specific journal or why you don't want to be published. Um, and then for the second writing prompt, uh, I want you to discuss the question, why should disciplines have separate publications? So we've been reading uh, in the Kagan book uh, for a little while now about the differences between the three academic cultures. Uh, so I want you to discuss why or why not uh, we should have different separate publications uh, for each field specialty. Uh, and those are your two uh, writing prompts. So I uh, have made a pass through resume cover letters. Um, if you received a zero, that means I don't have uh, either one of your documents yet. If you received a four or five, that means that you've... Uh, uh, I've, I've got one of your documents, but not the other, so make sure that you check in with me to see which, which document that is. Um, I will be making another pass uh, later on this week um, to pick up the ones that have now emailed me things. Um, so uh, next week I will be uh, looking at your writing prompts to see uh, if you're on schedule with those. 
so please make sure that you send me any writing prompts that uh, aren't in so that I can um, give you credit for those. And I will be putting in like a half credit in the grade book for, uh, for each of the writing prompts. Uh, so uh, please pay attention to how that's going along and make sure that I've got everything from you. Uh, and I'll probably send you an email if I don't have everything. All right, so uh, that's all I have for you today. Uh, have a good week, and I'll see you next time.